Hello class, I would like for you to keep in mind the big question for the passage that we read last night and the passage that we're reading tonight. Do you believe a person has limits? Tonight, our selection is a letter written by Ann Sullivan. This letter is discussing the same experience in which Helen Keller wrote the reflective narrative, which of course we consider an autobiography. And I want you to think about, could this letter also seem autobiographical as well? I'm going to start at the top where we have the box where we have some background historical information. Ann Sullivan became Helen Keller's teacher in March 1887. While working with Helen, she wrote letters to Miss Sophia C. Hopkins, a matron at Perkins Institute, a school for the blind where Ann Sullivan had lived and studied. Ann Sullivan suffered a childhood disease, which left her almost totally blind, but surgery at Perkins restored partial sight. She knew well the multiple challenges Helen faced but remain steadfast in her efforts to educate Helen. Now, the directions we see on the paper, we're not going to follow so much tonight. Remember that you're going to have an inner conversation, and these are some of the things, which also do refer to the directions, that I want you to consider while you're reading. While you're reading, obviously you're going to question the text, you're going to make connections, and there's, you're definitely going to make connections from this letter to the text Helen wrote in her autobiography. So there's definitely going to be some connections and comparisons and contrasts there. I want you to pay attention to the words, and I want you to think about the tone that we have. Anne Sullivan, as the writer, does she have a more positive outlook on the experience or negative and I want you to consider why. Why would she have the same or different point of view as Helen, her student? Let's begin with the letter. And it's going to start where we have the number one. I must write you a line this morning because something very important has happened. Helen has taken the second great step in her education. She has learned that everything has a name and that the manual Alphabet is the key to everything she wants to know. In a previous letter, I think I wrote you that mug and milk had given Helen more trouble than all the rest. She confused the nouns with the verb drink. She didn't know the word for drink, but went through the pantomime, and that means, of course, acting out, of drinking whenever she spelled mug or milk. This morning, while she was washing, she wanted to know the name for water. When she wants to know the name of anything, she points to it and pats my hand. I spelled W-A-T-E-R and thought no more about it until after breakfast. Then it occurred to me that with the help of this new word, I might succeed in straightening out the mug milk difficulty. We went out to the pump house, and I made Helen hold her mug under the spout while I pumped. As the cold water gushed forth, filling the mug, I spelled W-A-T-E-R in Helen's free hand. The word coming so close upon the sensation of cold water rushing over hand seemed to startle her. She dropped the mug and stood as one transfixed. A new light came into her face. She spelled water several times. Then she dropped on the ground and asked for its name and pointed to the pump and the trellis. And suddenly, turning round, she asked for my name. I spelled teacher. Just then, the nurse brought Helen's little sister into the pump house, and Helen spelled baby and pointed to the nurse. All the way back to the house, she was highly excited and learned the name of every object she touched so that in a few hours, 
She had added 30 new words to her vocabulary. Here are some of them. Door, open, shut, give, go, come, and a great many more. P.S. I didn't finish my letter in time to get it posted last night, so I shall add a line. Helen got up this morning like a radiant fairy. She had flitted from object to object, asking the name of everything and kissing me for very gladness. Last night, when I got in bed, she stole into my arms of her own accord and kissed me for the first time. And I thought my heart would burst, so full was it of joy. Please respond to the prompt I have listed for you on Edmodo.